Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Football Uncensored podcast with myself, Rob Curtin, and of course, John Sitton. Uh, we've had a little bit of a mini sabbatical, it's fair to say. Uh, apologies, quite a lot on uh, holidays and work and life, life in general. So, yeah, a little bit busy, but here we are. Um, John, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I, uh, three three weeks ago today, I got back off uh, off of a break. Went for a nice break with the missus, and then um, probably out of relief, getting another getting a case adjourned for a second time, and then be busy doing the paperwork ever since. And finally, I've got to go and see the barrister again tomorrow about some nonsense, really. Um, truth be told, uh, so I've had one. Uh, guilty in my absence because I never received the paperwork. Um, did a stat deck, which is a statutory declaration. Was told that uh, if I purge him myself, this, this, and this could happen. I said, uh, don't tell Porkies, I've got nothing to hide. Um, paperwork was three months late. It did come through the post eventually. And then um, it went from Chelmsford to Colchester, got adjourned. And then from Colchester to Basildon, got adjourned again. So now I've got to appear at Stratford in November. So, yeah, all fun and games in the meantime, trying to get a living and cover me nut. But here we are. Seen quite a bit of football. Um, yeah, watched um, the, the, just before the, the international break, the last bit of the Premier League. Uh, while I think of it, just to scratch the surface very quickly, uh, major talking points have been basically what we said on quite a few podcasts, which is um, too many coaches and managers with this ideology. Pep Guardiola light, Pep light, I called it on Twitter, and um, without the personnel. And even if they did have the personnel, the personnel should have been taught from kids, uh, which is where all the stuff is bedded in with regards to playing out from the back or from the goalkeeper. Inevitably, like, as we predicted, they get caught. And more more often than not, get punished. Yeah. yeah. So then on the international break, and here we are. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's very fair to say. Just just very quickly, say Pep, like we, you've coined that term. To be fair, my, the manager at my club, Southampton, although not a Pep uh, disciple, is very much of that of that ilk. And Southampton have been caught out. I think it's just about every game this season so far with. Or the keeper or defender playing a, a not look you know not looking where they're playing it or something or other across the back lines and costing us a goal. So uh, well, I've always said you know just every week. when the when the when the ball's in the goalkeeper's hands, he's in charge. He's basically in charge. If it's on, do it. If it ain't on, don't do it. Simple as that. And uh, it, not only that, it's got to be done at pace. And normally it's got to be done when the play shifted to one side. Um, or if both wide areas uh, are shut off and overloaded and being defended well, then you might be able to go into the centre-back for him to play out. Might just sit too many times are getting people are getting punished for it. Yeah, or getting caught with the ball and more often than not punished. A lot of times I see the goalkeeper, even Arsenal, he's ended up uh, before the break making a couple of great great saves after it was pinched off him and he's ended up making a couple of great saves and they're conceding a corner which is another problem mm -hmm. so why why create your own problems it's, uh, if it's on do it if it ain't on don't do it have a plan B and a plan C but right. there we are we're all, di we're all different yeah. let them carry on with it let them get on with it and it's all part of the merry-go-round and uh, you know if if it's a results driven business and they get the tin tack I'm sure the compensation packages are uh, uh, more than adequate. I'm, I'm sure they are. Um, yeah, like for this. Sorry, Michael. It's not yeah, it's certainly not restricted to um, Southampton. Uh, like no, no. Say, yeah. Top, top to bottom. Top to bottom. You can, yeah, yeah. I reckon, any in all four divisions. Like, I mean, it's laughable. Yeah. And, and, it, it and, 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 and I'll be honest, a lot of them they're, they're deluded. Yeah. They are uh, well, truly, truly deluded. But there we go. You, you did mention the point there about having the. Um, the quality of players to pull that playing style off. Um, just to digress, I know we intend to talk a little bit about England in this episode if we can, but you mentioned about having a difference perhaps in having the quality of players to pull that style off or not, as the case may be. We spoke briefly about it 
um, on one of our early episodes this season about Vincent Company, who was very much welded to that at Burnley last season in the league. Got relegated, got the job at Bayern, whether he was first choice or seventh choice, depending on what newspaper you read. He's obviously no disrespect to Burnley, or not too much. He's got a lot higher quality of players at Bayern Munich to try and implement his style. And I don't think he's had a bad start. I mean, is that a, a big underscore for your point there, really? It's... Well, yeah, especially when I saw one of the European fixtures and uh, they got punished in that. Uh, very much so. My belief is that uh, regardless of style of play, and you should be able to encompass all styles of play, all formations, is you're educated to do it as a kid. You talk the game as a kid. You've got your natural ability. Some have blessed with, uh, and it's even more the case now, which is what they look out for, a natural athleticism. Um, but you get to this stage now where established pros, they'll either want the ball in tight areas or they won't want the ball in tight areas. Um, if they've been taught it as a kid, more often than not, they can find a way out. Um, what you don't want to be doing as someone who got caught in that trap is trying to teach the game while at the same time try, uh, at the same time trying to achieve results uh, because it's hard to do both. That's just my take on it. And that, 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 that's through the benefit of hindsight and, uh, and experience. Um, but everyone's different, isn't it? You saw, you saw the, the, um, the difference. Oh, okay, let's not go overboard. It's Finland. You know what I mean? But, um, we saw the difference between the game against Greece and I only saw, I think, 12 minutes of highlights. And <clears throat> there's quite a bit I, t- I took from that. Um, and then you compare it to today, it was like chalk and cheese. Uh, and like I say, I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get too excited. And, and they, I used to say, uh, Southgate said this, uh, to assume results at that level is arrogant. Um, I don't think it is. You know, we're, we're a major footballing nation and it's not arrogance, it's belief. And I think that's our problem, part of our problem, having that um, almost impregnable belief uh, with regards to going a long way into tournaments, um, you know, which he managed to achieve. Mm-hmm. And he actually got criticised the way he did it. Um, and then when you look at the Greece game, you can probably see the reasons why. You know, with regards to the screen in midfield place, I thought I thought it looked, uh, I called it shambolic, you know, borderline shit was it, the goals. And, and that's without seeing the three disallowed goals. Because <laughs> I was out working. Um, you know, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, particularly the winning goal. Uh, and you just think there's so many things, so many ingredients wrong in this picture. Um, for any level of football, never mind that level. Yeah, so that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I didn't. I guess said to you at the time. I've not. I've not seen the Greece game. I've read a fair bit about it afterwards, and I spoke to you just prior to it with um, regards to the personnel and the formation. And I and I actually said I quite. I quite like the look at this. Apart from once again the lack of a a specialist left back or anywhere near a specialist left back in the team. But then, from what I gather, the. The players weren't quite in the for, in the formation that uh, the report I read uh, and was led to believe, and it sounds to me like whether it's tactically or 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 instructed the midfield either was virtually non-existent. You said screening midfield. I know Rice and Bellingham were, were playing, but Bellingham seems to be playing as the striker or the false nine to give it its modern name, and not. Not much in central midfield beyond him, and England got massively punished. Were we experimenting because of the because of the arrogance? Mm. Did we lack the belief to execute the experiment that Carsley put put out yeah. there? I, I, well, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I think I don't quite understand it. I'm a bit confused. I mean, I, I was uh, I was accused of signing my own uh, resignation with a few rants that I had, and then. Um, I just think to myself, well, if that's the case, then surely he signed his own resignation because I don't get the, the almost contradiction of calling up Solanke, who I think 
Or so you ain't had a cap for six years, seven years, is it seven years? Seven and years, I think. Le leaving him on the bench. Then at the end, uh, throwing on Watkins. Uh, it's all, almost an admission with regards to um, it's not here nor there. It's almost an admission. Um, we shouldn't have started with with this so-called false nine um, by throwing on forwards. And, and then at the same time, not having someone alongside Rice to screen the back four. So we're, we're neither here or we're neither there. Um, that's, that's the first thing. So don't get calling up Solanke if you're not going to give him a run out. Right. You get what I mean? And then to say, and one thing I'd like to think is I never sent a team out anything less than fully prepared and organised and then to actually say, although it was him or one of the players, and if it was him, it's even worse. Uh, we worked on it for 25 minutes yesterday. You know what I mean? What's that about? Now, the only thing I can say it's about is, and it's what I'd use it for, and I'll make it public, and I'll make it non uh, me employers, is in the grand scheme of things, this is like uh, sort of certain teams playing high-ranking friendlies, if you like, this European Nations League. Uh, and I'm going to use it to experiment, try things out, work on our patterns of play, work on our defensive strategy, work on our set pieces, look at players who are on the fringe, Look at players who I've bought in out the cold, as in Solanke. Look at players um, who maybe uh, deserve a call up and I'll give them a run out and see if they can make that jump. Uh, like he said to me on a podcast once, Alan, Alan Hudson, uh, when we reviewed the Euros on his podcast, it's a big jump to first team football. Then it's another massive jump from first team football to international football. And not, yeah. not every player can can make that jump, you know what I mean? So in the grand scheme of things, it's well down the pecking order behind the European Championships and the World Cup. So why not use it to as um, an extension of your training camp and just make it none? And, it, you know, if you, if, you, if you get beat like we did against Greece, but you've tried something positive, I don't, I mean, go out and play with freedom. What's that mean? You, you know what I mean? We went out and put, supposedly was told to go out and play with freedom. And um, we look like we were institutionalised. We 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 can't handle freedom uh, because we got beat by the Greeks, and that's right. that's no disrespect to them. I thought we insulted them by not having someone helping my screen in the back four, because um, all good football sides and all good businesses start from a position of giving nothing away. There's books been written about him, and um, yeah, that's where I'd be at with it. And, and if you look at the thing, there's so many ingredients wrong. The shape taken off of the centre-back, the, the, the goalkeeper's elected to use the airspace, right? This is for the Greece second goal. So this is from memory, right? And I saw it a couple of days ago. Um, okay, the ball's in the air. You assess the flight. You communicate as in you put your name on it. Uh, you get your timing right. You get up early, get your arm on him. Um, and then if it's a clearance roughly a few yards inside your own half, you're looking to punch it back into your forwards if you're on the edge of your own box, height, width and distance, right? Um, as he's going for it, the shape is all wrong in terms of people dropping around behind him and down the sides for the flick on. It sort of went sideways. Then I'm looking at the next ingredient. Why the ball's in the air, that's when um, everybody in your midfield has got to bust the gut to make a recovery run and make sure you get so goal side of the ball to make sure uh, you're in a position so either drive the ball backwards and at the same time, uh, hunt the ball down, the second ball, hunt the, hunt the second ball down. And we didn't. They got first contact on the second ball and then they get into the box and then people are falling over each other and making attempts at blocking and this and that and it ends up in the back of the net. You know what I mean? I just thought it was under 14 schoolboy stuff. That's, that's pretty down. I mean, you say about, oh, we like to... Players have been quoted as saying we like to play with the freedom. You hear, you hear that a lot. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a lazy chuck away comment and an easy, yeah. sort of semi neutral thing to say in a in a post or even a pre match interview for a player. For me, admittedly, the uh, complete, complete, complete and utter amateur footballer. But it just seems one of those. Oh, I'm going to say this because it. I think it. I think it sounds good. We gave Greece a lot of freedom, from what I can gather. Um, I think my other my comment to you post game, pre game was I quite like the look of this um, experiment, and post game I think I said to you, apparently so did Greece or words that effect, you know? Yeah, 
and so and so they did um you said about experimenting i, I agree you, this league of nations or nations league or whatever it's called is it's it's way below the, the big guns like you say but it's glorified like pre-season league. friendlies rob when i used to play yeah. you know finland uh is late in orient who i was playing for at the time and we're having a pre-season friendly against nottingham forest yeah. or um Greece, a late and Orient, and we're playing Arsenal, which I think we drew one one. Um Yeah, so yeah, but I mean you're looking at it and you're thinking to yourself, uh, yeah, you know, it's a chance to try a few things and you know, get a bit more match fitness. Not that they need match fitness, but um I just think like work on what you've been working on in training, it's a time you can apply it in a game and see if it's any good. And if it's good, you know, go with it. And if it ain't you throw it away. Um, yeah, I, I just I, I said that it looked like it looked shambolic. There were no leaders, no communication. Um, it was crying out for someone to uh, have, have that base of uh, which he, like I said, Southgate got criticised for. By the way, uh, having the two screening midfield players and the fact that we didn't, I thought, was disrespectful to to the Greeks. You know, and and it wasn't so long ago they were European champions themselves. Um, um. True. Yeah. So, 2004. Yeah. Uh, which I think means they've won it once more than we have. Uh, yeah. Sadly, that is yeah very true. One nil. One nil. Greece there. Yeah. Two one. Two one on Thursday. Um, I suppose all I can say to finish that little bit of thread off is it, it's better to experiment in games like this than it was to experiment in the Euros when Southgate himself admitted that Trent Alexander Arnold in midfield was an experiment. Yeah better experiment in these games. And he, I think he played left-back this evening against Finland, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, and he, he sort of wriggled out the thing um, like cleverly. And uh, I think the valve message he was trying to put across the caretaker manager was the fact that uh, with his quality, etc., we need him in the side. And he's a big plus, uh, paraphrasing, obviously. And uh, we, we're happy to have him and blah, blah, blah. You know, what, what they're saying is they, um, they've got to fit the criteria of being footballers. You know, yeah. rather than um, specialists, and uh, he fits that criteria. He's a fantastic footballer, it, without doubt. And we've both said it before. He's a fantastic footballer. Great goal um, from the free kick. Oh, tremendous, tremendous ping! You can't, yeah. you can't argue with that. I bet, I bet you might have had a discussion with Cole Palmer on who was going to take that if Palmer hadn't been subbed off five, five minutes or so previous. But he looked like he had the ump, by the way. He did look like he had the ump, but he didn't. Yeah. He, I don't think he. I mean, I, I saw most of the games for well, the first half, most of the second half. And there wasn't really a lot going on down our right-hand side, was there? It was all funny that all, we've just mentioned him, Trent Alexander-Arnold. It all seemed to be going down that left-hand side between him and Grealish when we were mm. when we were attacking. Palmer seemed yeah. very isolated figure, which was very disappointing given the clamour that's been for him to be put in the side. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, he's... I'm not surprised he had the arm, but I just think we're at that uh, same sort of position as we were with the, you know, Gerard Lampard skulls thing. And we've got so we've got so we're blessed with so much talent. I don't think anyone knows um, probably what the real best player for every position is and our best formation for those players. And the the other thing, just going back to the forward thing, um, I see the article in the paper as I was catching up leading up to the first game with regards to Harry Kane turning up for camp with um, an injury, he went over and bought, but Bayern Munich gave him the go-ahead. They uh, liaised with the uh, English medical staff and said he's all right. He was all right to go. Uh, but they, they rested him in the first game, played the day. Um, just to recap on a couple of things that we've said on these podcasts. So, you know, a little pat on the back for us about Kane coming deep. And I remarked that it needs players to make runs beyond him. Um, which happened uh, on quite a few occasions and we should have done better in good areas. Um, it, when he came deep to get the ball, there, there was more people running beyond him. One of them was Rice, which we said he's got to do more. Uh, I've remarked that Rice needs to make runs beyond the ball um, on more occasions. He needs to get in the box on more occasions and he needs to take a chance with his shooting on more occasions. And today he did all three and I thought, he was one of England's best players. 
and uh, great timing in the box uh, with his arrival and got the side foot uh, from the cross for, for one of the goals. So, yeah, I think he was a massive plus. But uh, I, I didn't quite get the, like I say, the other, the other two. You know, if you, uh, especially if you're going to call someone out at the international wilderness because of his club form and he's transferred. He actually said, I heard him interviewed, he said he's he's taken his club form at Bournemouth to Spurs and he's been, he's been really impressed with him. So he's called him up well, while he's on blob playing. You know, what happened to fit and inform? I don't know. But oh, uh, yeah. on, on it goes, you know, at least it gives people a talking point, I suppose. Not yeah. not least uh, the radio pundits. And uh, talking to a mate of mine on Twitter, uh, Ian Abrahams, known as the Moose on TalkSport, and he said, well, what do you think went wrong? And uh, oh, bum, 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 bum. He said, uh, yeah, I think you've captured it. <laughs> yeah. And the other one, um, I thought he summarised it quite well. Adrian Durham, we were messaging each other towards the end of the game and then after the final whistle. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. But at least it gives everyone talking points. But um, what I couldn't believe was a couple of things. We, uh, one was we rehearsed it for 25 minutes yesterday, and the other one was uh, I want to go back to the under-21s. So I think he's made it clear that he's just a caretaker. And in, well, yeah. in, in the meantime, what he don't want to do is upset people, upset players, ruffle feathers, um, come in, change too much too soon, uh, try and keep the feel-good factor snowballing, with his uh, his assistant, who, by the way, I don't think they've got enough coaching experience. Listen, the credibility, uh, particularly uh, Ashley Cole and Lescott, but particularly Ashley Cole, their credibility is stratospheric. You know what I mean? But I'm not sure that they've been coaching for long enough and definitely not long enough at that level, uh, an elite level. And he's like he said tonight after the game, you know, the, the, the job demands a world-class coach. So, um, you know, we've got a limited uh, pool of talent there, I would think. Uh, especially yeah, in terms know. of an Englishman taking it. Um, definitely where, in my opinion, Potter's concerned. Um, and then the other one's a German. Eddie Howe, he's got a promotion, I believe, but he hasn't really won any trophies. Um, that leaves Tuchel. Yeah, so it's a very limited uh, pool, pool of resources. Well, that'd be that'd be an interesting one, wouldn't it, appointing a, appointing a German? I mean, you said... Early on, um, Alan Hudson made the comment when you and him were doing the podcast yeah. about the jump for players between under twenty one to first team to international. Cars, you know, could arguably the same for managers. Carsley's been under twenty one. He's put him, or he's put himself, or the FA have put him in charge yeah. temporarily for a couple of games. Yeah. And the comments he's made, certainly if the the twenty five minute one can be accredited to him or whether it was a play or not that and the I fancy going back the under 21s if if that's not reversing your way out of uh, being a candidate for the role I don't know what is yeah um, uh, you've got Oedipus playing at the um, we'll see I've won along from the Garrick anyway uh, Mark yeah. Strong who's a fantastic English actor it's like it's like rehearsing Oedipus for twenty five minutes. We'll rehearse it for twenty five minutes, and we we'll go and see how it goes. It ain't gonna happen. Alan yeah, Armstrong, is it? Is that who you're talking about? No, his name's Mark Strong. Oh, Mark Strong, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah he's a very good English actor. Played a lot of fantastic roles. Uh, my, one of my favourite ones is of him in Body of Lies, where he plays a Jordanian intelligence officer. He's fantastic, really. He's got all the nuances and the hand gestures. Um, but my point being is it, it, it's Oedipus and it's like saying, well, what we do, we rehearse it for 25 minutes and we see how it goes. It's just, it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's going to be a shambles and uh, they'll have to bring the curtain down. Yeah. Uh, but he's got, well, apparently he's got six, six games. So he, he's been briefed. You've got six games. Um, well, you've got to ask what, because you've got to look at all the ingredients. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, trying to teach players the game, they don't need teaching at that level. Some of them have had great educations, but then he might want to teach them some of his little uh, little ways. Um, I don't think we're streetwise enough still. I don't think we're feral enough still. Um, that's to quote a friend of mine when I said, um, comparing us to my hybrid of a player um, that I wanted and the habits I wanted to teach him. Um, and when, when I cited um, maybe the cynicism of an Argentinian, 
He said, yeah, he said, you're right, Six, we're not feral enough. And I thought, what a good word that is. What's a yeah. good word, Phil? And uh, actually, that's what I remarked to uh, to Adrian when we was texting each other. Yeah, but um, yeah, on it goes. We we'll see how it goes. I think there's another one in November coming up in November, and we've got to, we've got to spank the Greeks over there. Uh, so it that'd be, be interesting. Yeah, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me if we do it. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you one way we won't do it is going there with a false nine. No, probably not. We've probably, we've may have proved that, and well, certainly proved it against the Greeks themselves. We're down literally the last. In the last minute, the last last forty seconds already of this one, so I think we'll conclude this one on England not being feral enough, and false nine with two centre forwards on the bench, possibly not the way to go. Watch this space for the next international break, as you say. So thanks very much for me. Very very quickly, John, you got fifteen seconds to. Yep. Thank you. Thank, thank, thanks to the uh, subscribers. Uh, carry on, watch, like, subscribe. Thank thank you everyone, and hopefully see you again soon. Thank you. Yeah, we we will endeavour to be a little bit more regular and uh, hopefully no massive long sabbaticals. Yeah, we regularly say that, actually. We do regularly say that <laughs> and we that, do try. That's the only we, thing we 